Greetings fellow programmers, this is Pavel and this is part 3 of our night tour, a uh, little chess exercise. In the previous videos we explained, uh, you know, I went over the little logic that I've been using to code this and uh, we created some, uh, some variables that we will be using and now it's time to start coding the actual functions. And I'm going to create like a little skeleton first. Like what functionality am I going to be uh, using? So the first one I'm gonna call a static that will return boolean and I'll call it R blocks filled. And this one will simply return true or false whether all the blocks are filled up, basically if the game is over, if we did all 64 moves. So this is gonna be our first uh, thing that we will be checking after the, the, the moves are being make, made. So, but that being said, we will need a make move function. Basically this one will move our little knight around it will determine whether we can uh, kind of uh, make the move but um, from this function I will be calling another function or another method uh, just so it's not all cramped together that will say that will uh, kind of return uh, the move itself so I will do public static and again, it's gonna return true or false. Most of these are gonna be true or false. Basically, can you make the move? Uh, is the move possible? So get move will return true or false whether the move was actually made. So uh, with that being said, um, we need to have a way to display the grid. Like if we finish the game, display the grid, whether it is uh, the final all 64 moves where, uh, that happened or simply display the best grid uh, with the best moves that uh, we managed to make in the in the loop so uh, it's gonna be public static and this one just displays things so nothing needs to be returned so it's a void and it's gonna be display grid and uh, finally we need to uh, after each uh, moves or at least after each round we need to uh, kind of populate the array again not these these are these are read only but we have array of our like uh, starting position and we have array uh, uh, for the uh, oh, we actually don't uh, but we will uh, maybe I forgot to uh, create one and which is of course I did um, it's gonna be private static character uh, this is gonna be a two-dimensional array that will have the moves in it and it basically will return uh, equal to the row and the columns like I said in the f previous video, I, I'm not hard coding them, I have the ability to change it, so the, all the arrays, uh, or this array will, will change accordingly. But this array needs to be uh, restarted. After each round, this one will hold the uh, moves that we made, but uh, we need to reset it for the next move, so we will create, uh, create a method uh, that will call, I'll call it simply public static yeah. and it's gonna be void because this one simply will populate I'll just call it populate array, not the best name but whatever and this one will populate the actual moves array and um, alright so uh, in fact let's start with that one how do we populate it? Well it's a two-dimensional array so it's gonna be a nested loop uh, equals zero i is less than remember we have rows and columns instead of hard-coded numbers so this one's gonna be let's say row i plus plus and inside of it we'll do the four 
integer, I'll just call it c equals zero. C is less than this time columns, we have rows and columns. Uh, and c, c plus plus. And in it, we'll simply populate it with the grid symbol. Remember, we have grid symbol, that is the pound sign, and then we will be replacing each pound sign with the x, depending on whether we move there or not. So basically what will hold the, uh, the position x is a move that was made, and if there's still a pound, that means that not all of them were filled, and we can determine whether any of them, are, any moves are possible. So simply uh, we will populate the i and c, in this case, with the grid symbol. That's the beginning. That we just, that's all we do. We just populate it with the grid, grid symbol, and then we will be checking against the moves array, whether we can uh, make more moves or not. So, uh, all right, so that's our first little function, or a little method, and um, so I'm going to start, well, let's start with the make move, for example, because that one's gonna be short. It's gonna be another for loop, I equals zero, I is less than eight. No, this time it is eight because there are eight possible moves. So th that's what we are doing now. We, we're not uh, checking uh, rows and columns. We are eight in this case means the actual possible moves. So in other words, we loop eight times because no more than that is possible to move. And a, I mean, I plus plus. And now uh, we can determine whether the move can be made. So uh, we will do if not get move. Remember, that's our next function that I will be coding. Uh, and if that returns false, then, uh, yeah, we can uh, make the move. Otherwise, do not make the move. So uh, return true. So, and if all these eight moves, or, we, you know, we loop eight times. So if neither of this is true, then we will return false move cannot be made and it's over so uh, because if you cannot move uh, any of the possible uh, l-shaped moves for the night then it's over that uh, you're at the end of the of the grid or you already populated all the uh, all the squares all right so um you know what, that's enough for this video. In the next video, we will actually go and start coding the main and doing some, you know, calling the random uh, initializers and so forth. So stick around and I will see you in the next video. Take care.